Hi, I'm Anjana Vakil, software engineer and developer advocate, and I am so excited to be bringing you this comprehensive introductory JavaScript course, where we're gonna be going all the way from our very first steps of the language through to the foundations that we'll need to begin writing professional modern JavaScript. In this course, through a series of hands-on projects, we're going to look at all of the building blocks we need to write full-featured JavaScript programs. We'll build up our mental models around how JavaScript represents values and how we can use variables and scope to access values. We'll learn how to do things in our programs by writing functions, handling browser events to react to user input, making decisions with conditionals, and repeating ourselves with loops. Finally, we'll take a look at how to debug and handle errors in our programs and other real world skills that we'll need as we continue our journey towards being JavaScript developers. So please join me on this journey towards unlocking the magic powers of JavaScript. I hope you enjoy the course. Why do we have the value of a variable that I've just declared, but I haven't given a value yet? Why is it undefined and not null? And to this, I would say, let's go back and think about our Backstreet Boys. <laughs> So um, a null value would be something where I'm like, hey, JavaScript, I want you to remember that, let's say, I'm not bankrupt, that there is no bankruptcy here. In which case, um, I could do let bankruptcy equal null. And now if I ask JavaScript what's bankruptcy, it's null. There's no bankruptcy. There has been no bankruptcy. So this is sort of a way that I can say in my program, and in, usually it, if I'm saying this, it's like I'm talking to another coder, maybe who's reading my code later. Maybe that coder is me in the future. And I'm saying, I deliberately want this value to be empty. I deliberately want there to be no value here. I don't want bankruptcy. I want a null value for bankruptcy. However, if I and I'm just I'm refreshing my tab here to like clear out my JavaScript contacts. That's going to be important in a second. If I just say let bankruptcy without saying anything more, JavaScript is going to say, hey, mm, I don't know. I don't know if you meant for there to like be a value here, but there's no value here. So that is the kind of uh, ain't nothing but a mistake version of nothingness of maybe there is supposed to be something here. I don't know. You didn't tell me, programmer. But I can tell you that there's nothing here. So undefined, I don't, I don't have any definition for this. Does that, uh, does that make sense? Awesome. Great question. OK. So when we declare a variable like that without giving it a value with let, we can use let to do this, we can later go in and give it a value. And that's called, so if, if just let bankruptcy here is called de declaring a, valuable, a variable called bankruptcy, um, in this second line here, what we're doing is assigning a value to that variable that we had declared on the previous line. So um, what, what this looks like is if I do, uh, If I do let my declared variable, and now I ask for my declared variable, which now my, my browser is getting smarter because it knows that this might be a value that I want, so it has an autocomplete option for me. It's undefined, same as the bankruptcy thing. But now, if I type my declared variable equals so value, much wow. Now, if I ask again, what is my declared variable? Now it has something it remembers at that variable. And so what we've done here is we have essentially split onto two lines, which maybe could be at two different places in our code, the same thing as if I were to say, let remember equals some value all on one line. So this line is doing both the variable declaration, saying, hey, JavaScript, make me a new variable, and the variable assignment. Hey, JavaScript, remember this value as the value of that variable. So there's, uh, there is a separation, in this case, between the assignment and the declaration, whereas on the first line that we saw, the remember September 21st, that all happens in one line of code. The point to take away here is that 
in order for JavaScript to remember a value, you need two things. You need to declare a variable, and you need to assign the value you care about to that variable. So can anyone walk me through their solution to implement a function called disable that takes in a button? Let's think through it together. Should we take a stab at it? Paul? Sure. So um, I, I did mine as a, a fat arrow function. OK. So const enable. Uh, OK. Let's start with disable. Oh, disable. Okay? Sorry. Yeah. Const disable, right, um, equals. And then uh, I just generic button. Um, in parentheses, button. So that's what we're going to name our parameter. And it's going to be like a button element similar to the B that we had pulled out of the console. OK. Yes. Then the fat arrow. Arrow. And then um, uh, curly braces. And then it was just um, button dot disabled equals uh, empty string. OK. Um, let's make sure that that also works. Uh, I'm going to, let's try this on, OK, so be disabled here. If we do disabled equals empty string, uh, now be disabled is false which is confusing because now the button is enabled. So maybe we should try using the set attribute approach. Because yeah, right. <laughs> um, I'm a little bit unsure what exactly is happening here. Because I don't know everything about web development. Mark, do you want to chime in? Uh, it should work, but we should use set attribute. Let's let's stick with set attribute because we know more predictably what that's going to do. So let's try button dot set attribute. And the attribute we want to set is disabled. And then we want to set it to just anything at all, but we'll use the empty string. So this is essentially the same thing that we called before, b dot set attribute disabled, whatever. We're essentially just parameterizing the b part here as button and making it a function. Cool? Great. OK. Now we want a function enable, which is going to remove the attribute entirely. And so um, if we were to figure out, all right, how do we remove an attribute? Well, before we typed in, sorry? So yeah, if we were to type in like, hmm, hey, MDN, how do I remo remove an attribute? Well, turns out, similar to set attribute, there is a method on elements called remove attribute, which we just pass in the attribute name, and then that removes the attribute entirely. So here, if I do, uh, let's say, B, OK, just want to make sure that. The, OK, so this button is disabled. OK, so b remove attribute disabled is now going to take away that attribute entirely so we don't even see it anymore. And the button is re-enabled. Yeah? Great. OK, excellent detective work. So now, um, Chu, do you want to walk me through functionifying this? Um, cons enabled equals parentheses buttoned that arrow. Uh, Button dot remove attribute parentheses disabled. OK, great. So now um, we have a small difference between the structure of the previous function and this one, which is the curly braces. Right? Um, and in this case, functionally, we're not going to have, like, in terms of how these are operating, we're not going to have much of a difference because neither of these functions returns anything. Both of these functions are carrying out some other operation. So that's OK in this case. But if you had a function where you did care about the return value, just be mindful of those curly braces, because that, that would mean you'd have to add a return statement, as we saw before. OK, great. 
So now, um, let me reload my local file and see if it updated. If it did, then I should have a disable function. Okay, great, we didn't have that before. Now we also had um, the option buttons variable, which we had declared earlier. So let's test it out. Um, how can I get the first button out of my option buttons? Quick review. Option buttons, zero. Option buttons, square brackets, zero, right? Great, that picks out a button. Now, what if I pass that in to my disable function? Let's test it out and see if it works. Oh, the button grayed out. It's hard to see maybe on the screen, but if you're trying this along with me, you should see that, yes, indeed, this did disable the button. Now, shall we try our enable? And hopefully we still have this. So enable, and we'll do it again, option buttons zero. It's back. It's clickable again. So first thing we need to do is asynchronously call the load quiz data function. Um, it's an async function, so we need to make sure that we use what keyword? Await, oh, right. So we want to await our load quiz data. And this doesn't actually take in any arguments because it's using some of these constants that we had declared way up at the beginning of the file, like all those breeds. And this URL is hard coded, hard coded. OK. But that function does return data. Do mm -hmm. Do we need to capture that? We sure do. We want to use the data that this comes back, that this gives us back in order to populate, in order to render our quiz. So um, what do we, uh, well, how can we do that? How can we capture this data? Destructuring. We could use destructuring. So what this returns is an array with three things in it. So how can I capture the result of awaiting this asynchronous load function? Do you use a const in front of that? We can use const, yeah. And then the square brackets. Square brackets, because it's an array we're destructuring here, yeah. And then in there would be the three that you have listed right there, image URL. Yep, and we can name them different things if we want, because all that we care about is the order, yep. So correct, correct yeah, correct answer and choices. Yep, great. OK, so now we're going to get those values, but we still need to actually draw stuff and add elements to the page. And to do that, we're going to use our render quiz function, which takes in the URL, the correct answer, and the choices. So on the next line, I can call render quiz with these values that I just got out. Yeah? Yes. Correct answer is the next one, and then choices. And if the programming gods are with us, who knows if there's a missing parenthesis or something somewhere here. But if the programming gods are with us, and I save this file now, open the file, file open in my, <gasps> y'all, we loaded this doggo. He's so big, because we did such a good job. And now there's a few different options. And this is a huge dog, so I have a guess. But what do you think? There, we have options. We added buttons. We added buttons, y'all. Now the question is, do the click handlers work right? Well, they're not disabled, at least, these buttons. So that's, that's a plus. But uh, what should we guess? Anybody got a guess on what doggo this is? Great Danes. Great, yeah. Well, that's one of our, not one of our options. So I heard Mastiff. We want to guess Mastiff? <gasps> Green, correct answer. Excellent job. Our click handler worked. Let's try again. Let's reload the page. OK, smaller doggo this time. <laughs> um, and I am not sure what this is, but should we guess? It's probably that Karen Terrier again. You think, we think it's the Karen again? Yep, sure is. OK, we're too good at the game. We have to check if our incorrect answer works. OK, I'm pretty sure that this is a Pomeranian. Yeah. So let's not guess Pomeranian, just to test our click handlers. I have never actually heard of this dog breed, Kuvas. <gasps> it worked. It told us that the answer I clicked, Kuvas, was wrong with our red, with our incorrect class, which we could have changed colors. And it told us which one was correct. It added all of those, it did that nested loop that we implemented earlier. We have implemented a dynamically um, 
a loading website that is fetching data from the internet, dynamically populating the page with new elements which have event listeners attached to them, and is responding to our user input. I mean, it's a very simple quiz game, but it's actually doing a ton of powerful stuff. And in order to do all that stuff, we had to use asynchronous JavaScript. And this is like possibly our first week using JavaScript, our first time really wrapping our heads around this stuff. And we've already got a dynamic, very kind of modern style um, render, like load data and then render it web page. <laughs> <laughs>